We're back on the record approximately 3.23 p.m. Excuse me, beginning of tape three. Okay, Detective Mallow <coughs> went back up in the um, in your affidavit uh, regarding the uh, August 29th uh, confidential informant by now I'm not going to ask you to restate but you, you've indicated you relied on Detective Williams report and in your affidavit you wrote a confidential informant was utilized to purchase the suspected synthetic cannabinoids the purchase was successful Wouldn't you agree with me that a fair reading of that is that the confidential informant purchased illegal drugs? The, no, um, <clears throat> confidential informant to purchase suspected was the successful purchase of the suspected synthetic cannabinoids well, was but you wanted that's what they went to try to to buy what they suspected were synthetic cannabinoids okay that purchase was successful yes okay but you wanted judge gant to believe that that was a successful purchase of illegal drugs didn't you of suspect yeah of course suspected okay. synthetic cannabinoids okay. correct but if you know the result of that, though, isn't that misleading to put that in there? I didn't know the result of that at the time. Well, you said you I've did. Already, we've you already went through this already. Okay. All right. But if that information is available to you and you don't utilize it, isn't that misleading? By omission? I didn't omit anything. I didn't see it. Okay. I've already told you that five times at least so do you feel it's okay to leave out or I didn't to just miss that out. information I didn't say that okay but you'd agree with it, me that it's not true to say that there was a positive test conducted I never said there was a positive right. test. So you, but you, I never so you, said there was a negative test. But you'd agree with me that there was not a positive one, right? I agree that I didn't put that in my affidavit. Right. And you wouldn't want to put it in there, would you? Because the report says it was negative. If there it? was a positive test and I decided that needed to be in the affidavit, or whatever, er, whatever, any other information I have, would be in, you know would be in there if that's what I don't even understand if that's what you were asking me or not so okay. exactly on the next paragraph when you say a confidential informant was utilized to purchase the suspected synthetic cannabinoids the purchase was successful um, you're saying the same thing there right Exactly. Not trying to say that this was a positive test. Not saying it. I didn't put in there it was positive or it was negative. Right. But you do know now that it was negative, right? I know now, but I didn't have that information. You didn't have that information? I didn't see that inf however you want to word it. Well, don't you think that that's significant to know the difference between whether you had it or whether you knew it? I don't, can you ask a specific question, not ask me what I think? Can ask me a specific question, I'll answer it. Don't you but You're asking me the same questions over and over and over. No, I'm not. I'm, yes, asking, you are. I'm just asking you to answer the question. And, well, ask me a, qu a straightforward question. I'll don't you it. think that it would be important to include information or to be able to identify what information you had available to you? If I was aware of that information at the time, yes. Okay. Now, reading that, wouldn't you say that this sounds like you're trying to say that this was a positive test, that this was a positive drug test here? No. Okay. 
And that's what you wanted Judge Gant to believe, though, isn't it? I put in there exactly what that officer, I'm not going to testify what that officer meant by, I'm not sure what you Well, I'm not asking, asking you to say what the officer meant. I'm trying to figure out what you meant. It's right there. Exactly what I meant. It's right there. Okay. What I had, the information I had understood at the time I wrote it. That's what's there. Okay. But you'd agree that that's not, that does not reflect what the result was, does it? It doesn't reflect, like, once again, that it, I did not put in there it was positive. I did not put the, in there that it was negative. I reported that a quantity of suspected synthetic cannabinoids was successfully purchased from black male at the business. That's what I put. And and it doesn't say anything about what Sergeant Bradley wrote either, does it? No. Okay. You understand, I hope, my concern about what you're testifying about because when we look at your affidavit out here and I see negative result, negative result, negative result on all these things. These are negative drug tests, right? There were negative drug tests on all presumptive, these things. Presumptive tests. Presumptive tests, negative yeah. results. Correct. Okay. And, and I get the feeling that you think that that's not important. Is that, is that fair for me to think that? No, or that's not? not fair for you to say that because I've already explained to you I did not see those test results. You saw the reports, negative. though, right? Correct. Okay. And we know you didn't see the results, right? Because they get thrown away, right? They are supposed to. It depends on what that, whatever detective who wrote the report, you know, if they want the EPU to destroy the evidence, they put that. I'm not going to say what, what they did or didn't do. But isn't your procedure, you don't maintain the little test vial, do you? No. Okay. So that's where the results are determined is based upon that right correct okay can you give us a kind of an idea of how you go through one of those tests and how you uh, uh, determine whether something is a presumptive positive or a presumptive negative uh, okay though based on what's each specific drug is a little different depending on each test kit comes with directions on exactly how to use it you follow those instructions and go by what that test says. Okay. Well, do y'all use more than one kit? More than one type of test? More than one type of test? Yes. It depends on the, the uh, specific drug. Okay. For suspected synthetic cannabinoids, do you use more than one type of test kit? No, we use one. We have available to us one uh, specific brand of test kit. Okay. And uh, you said that there's instructions that are included. Yes. So, and every time you all do one, you pull out the instructions and read the instructions? Yes. Cause oh. it, yes. How long does it take to do this testing? Not very long at all. How long is not very long? I, I forget exactly what the instructions say. And but you've yeah. done a bunch of these, right? Yes. How many? I, I don't know. More than 10? Yeah. More than 100? Uh, I don't know. No, more than 10. Okay. Enough that you would know pretty much by heart how to do the, the test, right? Yes. Well, okay. not by heart, I would say. Okay. Each, each narcotic is different, so you want to make sure you're looking at the directions to make sure you do it correctly. Okay. Well, I'm talking again just about this because we're, we're dealing strictly with... Um, suspected synthetic cannabinoids. Um, do you know those instructions by heart? Not by heart, no. Okay. All right. You, uh, I'm curious, you have this section here in the middle uh, starting on page three. Uh, it has uh, your affiant's name is Todd Mallow um, and goes on and talks about your experience and then on page four talks about more information about um, based on your experience and training you know the following 
and that goes on for page four, page five, page six, and all that is just general information that you're providing to the affidavit, right? That's not specific to this case, right? General information, yes. Right, okay. Well, where did you come up with all that information at? Through uh, assistance with, during my training when I came to the Organized Crime Unit. Did, did you type all that in the, that afternoon after you left uh, Teal Drive and uh, got the affidavit signed by the judge at 4, what time was that, 4 something p.m.? If Four, did, I, uh, did I type it all? Yeah. Four, 42 p.m. on the If you're asking day. if I started right here at the state of Texas and typed this all out, you know, that day? Right. Specifically, no. Okay, all right. Well, that's what I'm asking. And so, so you, some of it you copy and paste, right? Some of it is used as, you know, basis of the form, you know, specific to, to you, you know, to, you know, my background and sure. things like that. Okay. Correct. And all this stuff that's in the middle of the affidavit, page four, page five, uh, I mean, there's some, uh, uh, case law identified here, um, uh, all this type of stuff. Um, is that stuff that you copy and paste as well? Uh, some of it. Okay. So what, well, what parts of it is not? What well, part, parts of what? Well, let's just say... Once we, get, once we get to... Well, just go to section C. And it's not. It's not like specific. Each one is. I don't cut and paste everything. It's just certain. The basic form, you know, with the the way it's supposed to be laid out, you know, with the as far as the the word document and everything. Okay. Yeah. No, I understand what you're saying. I, I'm just trying to figure out. You you said some of it is cut and pasted and some of it is not. And I'm just trying to figure out which part is which. That's all. I mean, do you know, uh, just, uh, let's just say from e section each, C. Each search warrant is different. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know what you're asking me to, to tell you exactly, okay, I cut and pasted this part, you know, this and that. I can't tell you that. Okay. Okay. So, uh, the part that I've been asking you about is in section C, um, starts on page four. You don't know if that all is uh, cut and pasted from other affidavits you've used? Parts of it are, yes, okay. but I can't specifically tell you. Okay, all right. It, you felt like that was important to be included, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you don't know which part you cut from or which one you... Because I read through the entire thing and, you know, if things need to be, you know, go back and forth to review it, review it, review it till it's correct and till I feel it's, you know, correct and then I go from there. How difficult is it to retrieve a particular uh, offense report or a search warrant affidavit from the your all's clean police department system, your computer? Depends on who's trying to get to it. Okay. How difficult is it for you to get it? Not difficult at all. Not difficult at all. Okay. Unless it's been what they call cloaked where I can't see it, which different sections uh, have if I have access to it, it's very easy. If, but if I don't, then there's certain channels I have to go through to get okay. access. There's sections that you wouldn't have access to. Yes. Like, give me an example. I'm, I'm not um, understanding that. Okay. Say. Uh, say an officer was being investigated for something, something like that the uh, whoever was doing that would have permissions on it so not just anybody any officer or detective can just go and get that report you understand what I'm saying mm -hmm. 
They put permissions on what you can see, what you can't see. Supervisors have a more broad uh, what they can look at. Can you think of anything uh, that you've testified about today or when we were here earlier that you want to go back and correct or uh, clarify? No. Nothing? Okay. Um, and you, uh, I'm just trying to find what that date was, March 21st when you were here and you brought, like I said before, you brought a lot of information to us. I appreciate that. And then, um, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning today, you, there's still some more information that we had requested. That you, you're going to follow up on that the, with us? Specifically the tapes? Yes. From, I, will, I will check on that today okay. and see where they're at with it. I appreciate it. Um, and um, uh, these reports and, and stuff, I'm going to go ahead and have them marked as exhibits for the deposition as well that we've referred to, okay, uh, before we go off the record. All right. So, um, here's, yeah. that way we know all, everything that we were talking about. This was, uh, it's marked as Exhibit 2, and this was the return that we referred to. I'll take off my little sticky there. This is my copy of the search and arrest warrant that uh, has notes and things that I've been writing on it based upon this what is the we've one been talking about. Here. Right. And this is, there's one. Let's have that marked. There's three. <coughs> um, I'm sorry, what was exhibit number three, the one with your personal right. markings? Yes. Okay. That I was referring to. Uh, number four, we'll call the December uh, 9 police report. Number five is the September 25th clean police report. And Last but not least, number six will be the oops, August 29th clean police report. I think that's the only ones that we referred to today. Would you agree with me? Yes. The only ones that I pulled out and had you look at. Okay. Well, I've got no other questions for you. I appreciate you being here, and I thank you for your time. You're welcome. Pass the witness. Yeah, I had a few questions just uh, to clarify, but is it all right if we take a break? Sure, Short, yeah, absolutely. Short break. We're off approximately 3.41 p.m. I just need to make sure this isn't daycare. Okay, I just... Sorry. Sorry. We're back on the record approximately 3.43 p.m. Okay, I just had a few questions. In regards to um, SPICE investigations, are they different or the same than other illegal narcotics? They're very different. Okay, why are they so different? It's, it's new, uh, a new uh, drug on the market. and uh, Is it usually a street drug or does it come from manufacturers? It comes from manufacturers. Is it packaged different than street drugs? Yes, it is. How is it packaged differently? It's packaged in different, uh, they use different type of names, uh, uh, several different types packaged in like commercially type packages, cellophane or uh, different, I don't know. Does it look like a commercially yes. purchased product? Yes. Okay. Whereas a street drug like cocaine or methamphetamine, how is that typically packaged? It's normally packaged in whatever they have available to them, sandwich baggies or tin foil or whatever, not something that's manufactured by and labeled. 
Right, labeled and manufactured. And what is the typical labeling for a spice product? Does it have a street name or something they try to sell it as that is? They'll, they'll have several different things that I've heard it called. They call it Kush. Uh, they have different, you know, the different labels: King Kong, Assassin, several different. And those are the like names that. of different types of names, spices. Right. Okay. Um, but generally, uh, have you ever, in your training or experience, observed it to be uh, marked uh, and sold as a potpourri? It's been referred, not marked as potpourri, as that I know of. Some, well, some of them are. It, there, there's so many different ones. Uh, have you heard of it recalled or ever referred to as potpourri? Yes. Okay. And is there anywhere on that packaging that states not for human consumption? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. Uh, but would you agree people who are purchasing spice um, are purchasing it for the purpose of ingesting it? Yes. Okay, and how is that ingested? Usually by smoking. Okay, and um, can you take the tobacco out of a cigar and fill that cigar with spice um, to smoke it? Yes. Is that a way that people commonly smoke marijuana? Yes. And would you agree because it's a synthetic cannabinoid that um, the whole purpose of the synthetic cannabinoid is to uh, mimic the uh, effects and how you smoke it as it's supposed to be the same as marijuana, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and when we were talking about what you relied on when you wrote this search warrant, it wasn't just police reports, was it? Was it also conversations? Well, conversations. Uh, and what was your first uh, time to be acquainted with this specific investigation in regards to Anthony Joseph? When was the first time you became aware of po him possibly selling a synthetic cannabinoid? The uh, investigation that Eureka Williams was conducting and that led up to the search warrant. Okay, so you were present for the search warrant in September. Yes. And that was September 28th of 2012. Right. Okay, but you didn't have um, any involvement in reports or evidence for that case? No. You were just there to assist? Right. Is that typical in your uh, unit to assist other officers with their search warrant? Yes. Okay. And then did you have any further involvement in that case until February of 2013? No. Okay. And then in February 2013, you were um, on call as a detective, correct? Correct. And that's a shift you take for the full week? A full week, Friday to the next Friday. Okay. And if anything comes up after hours, um, you're the one who gets the call? Correct. Okay. And that was in regards to Sheldon Joseph being pulled over and by Officer Kingsley? Yes, correct. Okay, and then uh, also being on call, did you then get a call out to the burglary that ha happened on Teal Drive that was Sheldon and Anthony Joseph's residence? Yes. Now, when we're talking about spice, um, you've had some training and experience with it, correct? Correct. Um, is it your experience that the manufacturers will change the formula for uh, the spice to avoid prosecution? Yes, that is. I haven't seen that written down anywhere. Uh, but that's information from through resources that, from DEA and stuff. That yes. So based on experience or training you're receiving um, as part of your position with DEA, it's your understanding they do change the formulas? Yes. And have you ever had a conversation with anyone um, in regards to uh, the lab report that was generated after the September 28th um, search warrant? Specific conversation? Yeah, specific conversation. I'll break it down. Did you ever talk to anybody at the lab about that lab report? No. Did you ever talk to another officer uh, in regards to the results of that lab report specifically? I don't recall. Okay. 
do you recall ever having a conversation with Eureka Williams in regards to the results of that specific uh, lab report? From the search warrant itself? From the September 28th search warrant. Yes, I believe it was brought up in a weekly meeting. I'm not positive, but... but was that a conversation you had with her or something that was brought up during the It was the brought up in general that the, the amount that came back as uh, that tested positive was so significantly lower than what was taken out of the business that day. Okay, and do you have a, an understanding in regards to different labs' capability to test yes. spice? Yes. What's that? Um, I don't have specifics on parameters or anything like that, but I've been told by DEA that their lab up in Dallas has uh, different, they're able to test wider parameters, and that's where we're going to resubmit a lot of evident uh, spice to their lab. They've just uh, apparently re, uh, how do I say it? They were closed for a little while doing some upgrades to their equipment. Okay, now the DEA lab in Dallas, you said, is reopened? Yes, it is open and... And are they able, like you said, to test a wider parameter of substances? That's, that's what I, I understand. Yes. And that's when we're comparing it to the DPS lab in Correct. Waco? Yes. Okay. I'm passing. You said you have weekly meetings? Yes, we have weekly meetings. And in your weekly meetings, you talk about these cases? No, no, not specifically. Uh, depends. Well, you just told Miss Newell that you do that. You had weekly meetings, and the subject came up about the lab report. I said I don't case. remember. I didn't remember if it was in a weekly meeting. It could have been. I'm not sure. Okay. But cases, um, different cases that people are working on are brought up in that weekly meeting. We um, discuss you know, different things people are working on just, just to deconflict and share information, basically. And I think you said uh, you were present on September 28th, is what uh, you answered to Ms. Newell, right? That, uh, the search warrant? The search warrant out at uh, uh, Smoke Shack? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You didn't write a report? I don't believe I did. Okay. Why not? I didn't do anything significant enough that day uh, to warrant writing a report, a supplement that day. I what would you do? I don't help search, help package uh, items that we uh, seized. When you reviewed the uh, uh, offense report in preparation of your affidavit, I'm sure you identified that uh, Detective Bowman did a, an exceptional job in uh, breaking down uh, who did the searches and who found what, didn't he? Yes. Okay. Um, do you know, is your name listed anywhere in there about doing right. any of the searching? Uh, in the initial, it should be in there probably in the initial report. Okay. Were you responsible for um, turning off the video cameras in the business when you all entered the location? Was I responsible for that? No. Who was responsible for that? Nobody's assigned that position. Who who took that responsibility in I that case? I don't recall. You don't remember? No. You remember if anybody did? Not, not in that specific search warrant, no, I don't. Do you all normally do that? Turn off video cameras in businesses or locations where you do searches? It, it depends. If the supervisor says he wants that done, then he assigns somebody to do that. Okay. So you don't know if that was done in this case? I don't recall, no. You don't know if that was done at uh, the residence at 4702 Teal, do you? No. Okay. Yeah, well, why would you turn them off? Any idea? Basically for safety of, uh, if our sergeant determines he doesn't want, sometimes we're required to work in an undercover capacity, so he doesn't want that, our faces on 
camera. So those you're saying, I guess those recordings um, wouldn't be evidence that you would take. That's not my determination. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, Y'all wouldn't purposefully um, damage camera equipment to keep things from being recorded. Of course not. Okay. Um, but is it standard procedure for you guys when you go in and do these searches to try to determine if there is a recording device? No. You said uh, evidence was going to be resubmitted. Why is it being resubmitted to uh, uh, the Dallas lab? Maybe I misspoke. I know, I know evidence that uh, uh, we originally was scheduled to be submitted to the Waco lab that got held off and has been sent to the has been sent to the DEA lab. That wasn't the case in any of these reports, though, um, was it? The traffic stop that from Sheldon Joseph that was submitted okay. to the within the last two weeks, I think. Okay. I haven't got a receipt from the DA agent at the on the actual submission form. When you say receipt, do you mean that you don't know that it's been received on that end, or it hasn't been tested? Uh, I haven't heard. I know he, it's been sent off, but I haven't seen any documentation saying that, you know, they've tested, they haven't tested it yet, or they're in the process of testing it. Okay. It should be soon. They said they were going to expedite it, so I don't know. But you yourself don't have any idea how the lab re works in determining? No idea. Okay. No, nothing. You're, you're not holding yourself out as a lab expert? Yeah, absolutely not. Right, okay. Um, have you ever been at one of these labs when they do this testing? No. Okay. We at, at the end of your, um, uh, at the end of the completion of a search warrant, is there a report that gets written up and provided to anyone in the administration of the Clean Police Department? There's a what we call a chief's letter. Right. Is there a, uh, do you know, what, are some of these um, done in some cases and not in others? No, they're done on every case. Okay. So if I haven't received one in cases, then would that mean that it's just missing? Uh, I wouldn't think so. It's okay. probably in microfish or... Okay. What would go in a letter to the chief after a, a search? Basically, uh, what, where the uh, search warrant was ex executed, what items were seized, whether there was any damage done, uh, if it was videotaped or not. Some of these are videotaped? And if we do, uh, yes. Were any of the ones that you referred to today or you referred to in your affidavit, were they videotaped? No. Why not? I don't have the answer to that. I don't okay. know. Was it my case? Who makes the determination if they're ready? Supervisor. Tape? Okay. Uh, you were the uh, case agent for one of these cases, right? Yes. Did you decide not to videotape yours? We don't. Yes. Why? Uh, it wasn't an actual, like, no knock type search warrant where we normally we document if we have to ram a door, we document that, you know, to catch. You know, we'll, if we did any damage or anything like that, right. that's why we do that. Well, how did y'all get in the house over there at 4702 Teal? That, I don't recall. Well, you were there, weren't you? I was there um, initially, and when I went to type search warrant, got it signed. The other detectives were there. When they made entry into the residence, I was not there. Okay. To your knowledge, did anybody climb through that broken window? 
I don't know. Okay. If you don't know. You didn't. You know that. I do. Right? Okay. Well, I know I wouldn't fit through it, so. Um, okay. I don't have any other. Do you know if any of the evidence from any of these cases has been resubmitted to the DEA lab? Not yet. Okay. But it is the evidence from the search warrant on the 20, 28th, right, is going to be okay. undone. I just don't know. That's up to the my DEA boss up there when that gets done. Okay. Yeah, would that include the evidence that was taken from uh, August 29th and September 25th? That, I, I don't have an answer for that right now. I don't know. That's what I have nothing further. All right. This You're concludes done. the videotape deposition of Todd Mallon. Today's date is April 11th, 2013. We're off the record approximately.